Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Hugo Blowfish website. This is what I've been using for my new website here. And this is the official developer page here. I'm going to try and get through this pretty quick instead of making these excessively long videos. So we'll just go ahead and get started here. So we're going to need a few things to get started in order to be able to do this. First, you'll need to go to go.dev and download Go. So you'll need to get it for Windows or Apple or Linux, whatever operating system that you're running on then you'll need to go to git-scm.com and grab the git install from here and then you'll also need to download Hugo. Now, Hugo is a little bit different when you go to install this. First of all, there's a couple different editions of this. You do need to make sure that you get the extended edition. So I'll just click on install Hugo on Windows. So there's two editions, there's the regular and then there's the extended edition. In order to be able to use the Blowfish website, you do have to have the extended edition. So do make sure you install that one. And the best way to do this, honestly, I would just recommend using like Chocolatey or Winget is typically the easiest way to get this installed. And then two other things. So first you'll need an editor of some sort. Now I like v uh, Visual Studio Code or VS Code for short. Feel free to use whichever one you want to. I like this one though, it works well. And then presumably you're probably going to want to host the website. If you're building it, you're probably going to want to host it. Now you can, what you can do is upload it to like a private GitHub repo. And then from there you can host it on like GitHub pages or Cloudflare pages or Netlify or one of these other hosting platforms pretty much I think all three of those are free I know for sure github pages is free and I know cloudflare pages is free up to like a certain point like once you get like a certain level of traffic it's free which is quite a bit of traffic by the way so at any rate it is good to have this because if you're going to try and post this as a website if you have this down I'm just speaking to the people that have never used this before and if you've never built a website like this before you really do need to have this it will make life a lot easier for you if you have all of this stuff ready to go and then for the purposes of the video we are going to be using the documentation from blowfish quite a bit now I do have my own write-up where I've kind of walked through stuff and I've condensed down the important things to get people up and running really fast so if you go over to my website and just click up here on the search bar I haven't added it on the nav bar yet I got to figure out how I want to integrate I'm making it start going to start making like a bunch of guides like how to do uh, build websites like on the platforms that I have experience with how to do like OBS recordings and set up like all the shit in OBS and all that so I haven't got around to making the navigation for it yet, so I've got to work on that a little bit. But if you just go here and type in Blowfish in the search bar, you'll be able to click over to this page that I have started to write up here. Like I said, this is enough to just get you up and running. I'm going to walk through a whole bunch of more stuff that I haven't covered here, but I'll get around to expending this later. And then I also have some custom code that I have pasted down here. I'm gonna be workshopping that and expanding on that. But for right now, this stuff is available and I'm gonna go through this as well. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So once you have downloaded and installed all of that stuff, you are ready to get started with making your website. So here's what we're gonna do. So go to wherever it is that you want to create your website folder. Now this is for Windows, so it's gonna depend, it's gonna be slightly different on if you're on Mac OS or Linux. But from here, what I'm gonna do is right click and just open up a terminal window here. And I'll just drag this over so everyone can see it. Now here's all you have to do to get this installed. There's a couple different methods. The developer has added a new one. It's in beta right now, so I'm not going to recommend that one just yet. When it gets to a stable release later on, then I will recommend it. But for right now, I'm just going to go through like the normal I guess normal way of installing there's a few ways to install it. this one is pretty straightforward so you do Hugo new site and then you give the name of the folder that the website files are going to go into so I'm just going to do website now you can do other things here you could do like personal site or whatever so whatever you want that folder name to be is going to be this little uh, stretch right here so I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter and you can see, all right, we've got that installed. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do CDs because we want to go into that folder and we're going to type in website because this is the folder name here. 
now we are inside of the website folder. Now we need to install Blowfish to get this to work. You can find this through the official developer documentation. I also have it on here as well. So what you can do here is just copy and paste this stuff or like, see, so you can just go over to the developer's website. So then what you need to do is go here and type in git init and then paste this code in. Okay, that's just because I had a firewall rule that was blocking Hugo from being able to run. So just go ahead and use this piece of code right here or this command rather, and it will go ahead and install Hugo into this website folder. And depending on the speed of your internet connection, this might take a couple of minutes, like one, two, three minutes. Now, once that is done, we will go ahead and go into this folder here. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do. So first of all, you can just go ahead and take this hugo.toml file. You don't need this, so what you can do is just go ahead and delete this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do here is just go back to our terminal window. Now this is for VS Code, so if you're using a different editor, I'm not sure what the command is gonna be. This is what it is to bring up the code for VS Code, so I'm gonna type code in space and then put a period. Now we have VS Code coming up and it's going to ask, do you want to trust the authors of this folder? All the stuff that's in here, I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. Okay, so there's a few things that we need to do to get our website up and running. So what you can do here, so what you can do here is just go back here. So here's what we're gonna do to get this started. So I wanna show you some, so I'm gonna type Hugo server. Now you do have to type Hugo server in order to be able to get this started. And by the way, I got a little too far ahead of myself there. So you do need the hugo.toml file in there for the time being. So just go ahead and leave that there. You can get rid of that later on though. It doesn't need to be there once you get stuff up and running, but just leave it there for the time being because we need to be able to run the local server here. Next, you'll get this little line here. It says web server is available. So you just type Hugo server, hit enter, and it will host this so you can load this up locally here and see the changes that are being made as you're going through and working on your website. So just go ahead and copy that and then go over to your browser and paste that up into the search bar and load this. Now you'll see that this is page not found. So if you try this, because people might just try to do this right away, here's what you need to do to fix that. So to fix that, we've got to pull our config files out of here to be able to do this. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and right click and we're going to make a new folder called config. Now once you have config, go ahead and make a new folder underneath of that called, so you need to do an underscore and then type in default. This is where our config files are gonna go. So to pull the config files that we need to be able to work with, click on the themes, blowfish, go to config, and then you need to copy these six files out of here. So go ahead and copy these and then paste them into default. Now, there's one other thing we need to do to get this up and running. This pound sign theme equals blowfish, so just go ahead and uncomment this and click Control S to go ahead and save it. Now once you've gone in here and saved this, your website will now be up and live for you to be able to take a look at. So now if you go here, you can see now you've got basically a blank canvas to be able to work with. You've got your light theme and dark theme button up here. You've got your search function, and we've just got this blank canvas that we can now work with. Now from here, I could go and start like building stuff out and show you that way. I think what would be easiest for the purpose of this demonstration would be for me to pull up my existing website and I can kind of work backwards from there because it will make more sense for you to be able to see things that way. So what I'm going to do is pull up my main website here and then I'll pull up VS Code so you can see how I've got all this stuff set up in order to be able to get like these menu items and all that. That'll be a lot faster than me just starting from zero. It'll be less confusing too. Okay, so we'll start working through the config files. We'll start working through the content files to so just go through all this stuff. I'll try and make it fairly simple and straightforward here. Now this does use markdown files for the actual content of the pages, just so everyone knows. It's actually really simple and straightforward. This just like the MK Docs material website tutorial that I did a couple of months back. Same thing, markdown files, they're super easy to work with. I really like using that stuff. So let's go ahead and start working through this. So I'll go through the config files first and then I'll start working through how the content gets set up onto here. And then I will also work through some custom code that I've made for this as well. So there's quite a bit to this and how you have your site set up is going to depend on how it is that you want it set up. Here's how I've got things set up on my website. So I've got, so like I said, you just uncomment the theme 
for Blowfish, save it. And then you put your base URL in here. Presumably you're going to want to, if you don't already have a domain, you'll probably want to go ahead and purchase one. But there's not much that you need to do with the config file here. Now inside of languages, there's a few things that you can do in here. So obviously you have like your language code for the website, you have the title for the website, you have other things like you can do a different date format, you have your copyright for the bottom of the website. So if you scroll down here, you can't quite see it from here. Windows is being a little glitchy right now uh, with trying to get this window pulled up here. Let's see if I can just do this. Okay, so it's just still a little below down here, below the change log. I'd need to change shit in OBS. I'd need to change some shit around in OBS to get this to work properly. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep moving here. But this is where you put in your copyright. So this ampersand copy, semicolon this is what gives that little copyright symbol and then you can just put your information into here now this image portrait.webp so this is stuff that you can add for like your name right here so you could do a headline so i'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and uncomment this i'm only human go ahead and save that and that is like so this like the subtitle so you can add this stuff i just left this out of my website but feel free to change this and do whatever it is that you want now your bio so this is a little different so i don't use any of that for the home page here so you can go ahead and change this around and workshop this but here's how you get the Actually, we'll work through the rest of the config files and then I'll go through like adding actual content onto the website. But there's not much you need to worry about with either this file or this file. You don't need to do anything in here. I mean, unless you really want to, you can come in here and change stuff, but pretty much all this stuff in here works fine. Menus.en.toml. This is going to be a pretty important file here that is going to allow you to set up the navigation bar for your website. So let me just go ahead and drop that down here so you can see that. So I've got that stuff up there. Now that's how you set, so the, here's how you set this stuff up. So you've got your home button. Now, if you want to, so if you want to go to the root of your domain, so in this case, like for my website, it's kenharris.io is the root. If you want to go to the root, you just do a forward slash in the page reference. So if I click home, that's going to take me to home just by having this here, that's all you need. Now, if you want to set up an external link, so cybersecurity goes to that MKDocs website that I built. When you want to set up an external link, what you do is go ahead and just have this here. So like main, then you give it the name, obviously, and then you just do URL equals, and then you put the URL in there. Now, when you want to do other stuff, so like I've got this book recommendations here. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. So what I had here before, I've been changing stuff around. So if I uncomment this stuff right here, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all three of these. Go ahead and save it. What it does is now it gives me a recommendations and it gives me a little drop down where I can click on book recommendations. So what is happening here when I put this as parent equals recommendations, it's putting this book recommendations as uh, being here under the recommendations. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment all of this though, because I don't want that on my website like that. So you do the name for, like I said, obviously for the link to click on, page reference. So this is internal to your website, the page reference. So URL equals, that's an external page reference equals this is internal for the actual website itself. Here's how to do this when you have page reference. So over here on content, I'll go ahead and click this. I'll click books. So this is how, so I want this to go to, so this is book recommendations and I want it to go to books. What you have to do is when you set up your content, the, the naming of your folders is super important. You have to make sure that your folders are named the same as the page reference here in order to be able to make clickable links up here on your nav bar. So what that means is that when I put books here, now whenever I click on this button, it goes to this top page here, which is all of this content. Now, if I changed it to like Gary V, let's say, now if I go back here and I were to change this to Gary V, if I put this to say Gary V and do this, it's going to go to a specific article that I wrote or a specific book recommendation rather. So that is how these work. So this is just a matter of workshopping it to how it is that you want your navigation on your website to look. I can tell you this is a hell of a lot easier to do it this way than I have seen with some websites. I'm sure people have seen that old Webflow website. If you don't, if you haven't, you can go back and watch some of my old YouTube videos when I was using a Webflow website. 
I can tell you it was a pain in the ass to set up navigation there compared to this. This like super easy and straightforward. It looks like a lot, but it's really simple to uh, do it that way. Now, the other thing that you can do here is you can also set up, so I've got these social media icon links up here. Now, all you have to do, so if you scroll down, there should be some on the default config file because uh, the developer had these pre-made in here. So all you have to do is come in here and change this and you can actually use the uh, names for these icons here. So you have like Twitter, YouTube, Substack, the name of all the icons is on the developer's website. So if you go to uh, blowfish.page and then go over here to docs, so you can actually just go up here to the search bar and look for uh, emoji. It's either emojis or icons. It's the font awesome pack is what it's called. If you just go up there, that will show you the names for the names of the icons here. So I've got YouTube, Substack, and Twitter up here, and then I have the links going out to those. Now, the other thing on that is the weight. So the weight is a matter of where this shows up in the nav bar, so 200. So a lower number means that it's going to be farther in, a higher number means that it's going to be farther out, so 200, 300, 400. So you, Twitter's 200, YouTube's 300, so it just works its way out. And then you also need to keep that weight in mind. That's something else I forgot to mention. You need to keep that weight in mind. So if I go ahead and change this to a four, you can see it moves it behind book recommendations, which is a weight of three. So this is just matter of order of where you want these links to be. And then the other thing, so there is the footer menu here. Now what you can do here is go ahead and add items down here. So I have a change log for the website and then I've got the page reference for the change log. So down here where it says change log, this so people can click and see what I've updated and when I last updated it. It's something that's handy for a lot of websites, especially if you do like a lot of technical knowledge so people can kind of keep a track of what you've been updating on the website. But that's how you add footer links is just footer and then you just add whatever. And then like I said, you could also do an external URL. You just change this to URL and then put the external link over here. But that's about it for the menus config file. Now module, you don't really need to worry about this one. Params, this is an important one. This is going to dictate a lot of the actual look of your website, there's quite a bit to unpack here. I'm not gonna go through the entire thing because there's a lot of good documentation on the developer's website and I'm going to build out some stuff that for me, the reason I'm writing like that page for my website is to just kind of fill in some of the gaps that I thought were there that made it like fast for me to do stuff. So I'm gonna cover some custom code that I wrote for the website, but we'll go ahead and work through some of the stuff in here. So, you have different color schemes. Now color schemes, these are on the developer's documentation. There are different color schemes. So you can do like neon colors. So if I get rid of this, I think it's literally just called neon, yeah. Now it go ahead, it changes this to like neon colors for the website, which you can see. I wasn't a huge fan of this. I mean, it doesn't look, I think it looks good, but it wasn't something I wanted for my website. I actually found the Blowfish color theme, like the default color theme actually works pretty well. And I believe you can also set up your own color schemes. I haven't tried doing that yet though. Now you'll also have default appearance. I like really like dark themes in case people haven't noticed. So I just force my website to stay as a dark theme. You can do like auto switch parents for like, if you're gonna have both and then just like automatically switching to like whatever people are using by default for their operating system, I believe is what this option is. The developer's documentation does cover that for sure. Now there's some other stuff here. You don't really need to worry about a lot of this stuff. A lot of this stuff really isn't super important. There are things so like default background image. So I've got this picture here of a forest on my website. So how I did that. So this is commented by default. So you do have to take that out and then you have to name this whatever the name of the file is. Now in order to be able to use these, what you have to do is go to the assets folder and then they just get dropped in the main. So don't drop them in like an image folder or like the CSS, these need to go in your main. So I've got main background.webp. So that's what this picture of the forest is. Now, as we scroll down some more, so you have a table of contents. I'm gonna come back to table of contents later. Now there's different options. So you can do different things for your header. I like the fixed position. So if I click over on book recommendations, I'm gonna show you this. These headers are here for a reason. I'll show you this later. 
So I chose fixed, that way the header just stays up there, but you can choose different options. So whatever it is that you wanna do for your website, this is just a matter of you playing around with this, figuring out what it is that you like. And then there's certain things, so like on the footer, I want it to be like copyright and stuff like that on there. So that's why I've got that on there. Theme attribution just obviously attributes it, but I'm very public about the stuff that I'm using for my websites and I make sure I give a lot of credit. So I don't have that on mine, but feel free, turn it off or on for yours, whatever you wanna do. Now here's where stuff gets really important. So your homepage here. So you have a background option. Now in order for this to work, so this is going to be commented by default. So you do need to change this to whatever the name of your image file is. So I use main background.webp for my homepage image. Now, if you select background, you do have to make sure that you have a background image or otherwise it will be glitchy and you'll have issues with like trying to do like a live preview of your website. So just make sure that's set, but there's different options that you can choose here. I like background the most but you can also change this. So like there's different options for uh, displaying stuff here. So if I change that to page, now you can see like that has changed the look of the homepage like significantly. I tried the different options and I didn't really like the other ones all that much. It seems like from looking at the people that like example or websites of people that actually are using this for their own websites, background does seem to be definitely one of the most common ones. It does look really good. I like the look of it quite a bit. So you know, feel free to use whatever it is that you want there. Show recent, this is for, so you can do like blog articles that will show down here uh, for the bottom of your website. So they'll show up like down here so you can have links there or you can turn it off, whatever it is that you wanna do. Now we start coming into some really important stuff here and I'll kind of work through this a little bit now and then I've got some other stuff we'll cover later. So there's things like show date, show views, show likes. So I don't have this stuff enabled on my website at least for the time being. So let me show you how the developer has his website set up. So you can, if you come over to the developer's website to the documentation he has written, you can see he has things like tags turned on for these individual articles. He's got number of views, number of likes, how long it takes to read through it, then you can click through here. It shows all this stuff up here. Like people can go and share all this kind of stuff. They can turn on like this uh, reading or Zen mode here, which is just a way to read the website or read the page. I don't have any of that stuff enabled on my website, but that's what all of this stuff is here. Now hero style, I do like, like I said, I like background, so I just stuck with that for my uh, different content pages. And there's different things you can add in here if you wanna have them or not. The, all of this is covered on the developer's website. So like if you wanted to run like show date, so if you just type that in up here on the developer's website, if you go to this configuration page on the developer's website, there's all of these different codes color, uh, covered inside of this page here. So all of the different stuff that's in the config files, you can just come in here and do a control F and search for whatever it is that you're trying to find out more information about inside of the config files here. Now I've got show table of contents enabled on the article or also what's called a leaf page. I will show you that here in just a moment. And I obviously don't have sharing links turned on for right now. Now on list pages, I have show table of contents off. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then you can just work through the rest of this if you want to. Some of this stuff you might not need to worry about. Like I haven't really messed with any of this other stuff. Like I don't have any of this Fathom Analytics or any of this stuff set up for mine. But that covers that. Now let's cover adding content because there's a specific structure that you have to follow, then I'll cover some custom code and then I'll cover what stuff looks like on the website uh, for some stuff that I wanted to show people. So if we click on content, so you'll need to make this folder in order to be able to add content to your website. And then, so you'll have your main index. So you have content and then underscore index dot MD for markdown. Now I've got this, so you do these three dashes here and here. Now I've got this description here. This is for SEO. Presumably you're gonna want your website to show up in search engines. You do need to add these descriptions to each of your pages. I haven't got around to doing it for all of my sites. So you're gonna see like on some of the pages, I don't have this yet, but for good SEO practice, these need to be in here. These need to typically be like 145 to 160 characters for optimal 
uh, SEO, so I kept, uh, so I keep all of my stuff within that limit right around there. And then this is the actual stuff for the homepage. So if I go back here to my website on my homepage, this is my homepage right here. So what you have to do in order for this to work is have underscore index.md. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's get rid of this underscore here. And you can see that that screws with how stuff looks on the website. So how you set these files up is really important for it to work properly. So I'm gonna go back here and I will rename this back to underscore index markdown. And now it has fixed our website to go back to normal. So how you set these up is really important. Now let's go through the next things here. So let's go ahead and open up books because I've got this book recommendation uh, section of the website. So let me click on this and show you what I'm about to talk about here. So I've got book recommendations here, got all my text here. And then down here, you can see like these are the individual articles, blog posts, whatever it is that you wanna call them. And then you can go ahead and click in here and read stuff further. Now you'll notice down here, nothing shows up down here to click on. So let me click back here and I'll show you what's going on there. So inside of your content folder, so this new folder is books. Now what I did is underscore index.md. Now the reason that you have to do this, it, when you put the underscore in there, it turns it into a list page. Now the list page is what allows all of this stuff to show up. Now when I clicked on the book recommendation, you'll notice there is nothing down there that I could click on. That's because I have it as just index.markdown. This is just like a regular article form here. So that's a very important distinction. If you want to be able to navigate to stuff within a page, let me go ahead and move this. If you want to be able to navigate to stuff within a page, you need to have the underscore there to make it a list page. Or if you don't want to, if you just want to have this, then so like I said, these are called leaf pages where you click into it and there's nothing at the bottom. If you want it to be a leaf page, just leave the underscore out. Now you'll also notice I have a featured.jpg in here. The featured.jpg is what shows up for the background. So this was something I made in the config file with the background uh, theme that I set up for like being able to go to these different pages. You can select different options. But so like when I click here, so this is used for the thumbnail. And then when I click here, you can see that is the background image. So those have to be called featured.jpg. Now something else, if you want to add images into, so I'm not gonna cover Markdown files, by the way. You can go read stuff on Markdown. Markdown's really simple. There's a bunch of YouTube videos out there. Maybe I'll make some covering it later on, but I don't really even use Markdown to nearly the capabilities that the files have just because I'm making more simple stuff but you can do like code blocks and a whole bunch of different shit inside of here. But I mostly do more simple stuff for my website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click content. Now, if you want to add images within a page, so you'll notice here, I made a folder called image within the blowfish page here. So I've got all of these and then I have my leaf page here. Now inside of the leaf page, here's the code that you need to use. So image class, thumbnail shadow, all of this stuff. So this is what you have to do to use images. And then you have to have your image folder and then the exact name of the image file. So I've got these lists here. So let me show you what that looks like. Go to that page here and scroll down. You can see that I have uh, different images that can be clicked on. And then you can obviously pull those up and zoom them in more. So that is how you get actual images inside of the page. And you can also see, so like I've got a code block here. This is what you can do with Markdown. So like I said, you can do quite a bit with these. I'm not gonna cover all of that. If you wanna do like a code block, just add these in here and then you put all of your code inside of there. So that is how to add content. Now I'm going to show you one other thing and then we'll start to uh, wrap this up here. So one thing you'll notice, if you come back to the developer's website here, now this is a matter of taste. There's nothing wrong with this. This I like my websites to be a certain way. Other people like websites to be a certain way. It's, and I've seen things go multiple ways. There's no right or wrong way. You'll notice the way the developer for this theme set this up is that the text is off to the left of the website. And then the site, so if you put this in here, this gets squeezed in. I'll show you what I'm talking about here pretty soon, the table of contents. But even if that's not there, so let's go ahead and go back to docs. Everything is lined up to the left side of the website. 
I like to have things in the center because I don't like looking off to like one side or the other. I prefer to have things centered. So here's what I mean. So like if you go to my cybersecurity website that I have set up here, all of this stuff is set up centered. The table of contents is put off to the right and then there's these other links over here you can click. But all of the main content is perfectly centered. That's how I like my website to be. And so I wanted that for my new website that I built on Blowfish where it was going to be that way instead of like, so I put some code here to bring all of this stuff to the center instead of having it all off to the left side here. Here is what I did. Now, just an FYI, this is kind of spaghetti code. I'm still going to come, I'll come back and workshop this later uh, because I there's some different things I wanted to do with it that it wasn't quite working. I'm gonna need to do like some HTML and JavaScript to make this work properly. So here's what I have. And I pasted this onto uh, the website here itself. So if you go back to this Blowfish page here and scroll down, I've got all of this inside of a code block so you can copy and paste this if you want to use it. So let me show you what this does. So if I go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff and save and go back here to, let's say the book recommendations page, like you can see when I get rid of that CSS code, everything is off to the left. And this is kind of designed to have a table of contents. Now for my website, I didn't want a table of contents on everything. And I also like to have justified text as well which is where like all of this stuff gets lined up properly here. Again, this is a matter of taste. Some people might like it, some might not. But if you wanna have it kind of like how I set that up, which you can do for the time being is use my code, but it does come with a limitation, which I will show you here. So I'll go ahead and go paste that back into, back in here and go ahead and save this and we'll get all this stuff back in here. And by the way, you'll notice like it can be a little glitchy like when you're saving stuff and then coming back in here, stuff will show up in like different spots and all that. It's just like, just some slight glitchiness. So over, so the table of contents that I left as faults in the config file. So if I go back here to the config files, go down to parameters. Now for the list pages, I kept show table of contents faults, but I enabled show contents on the leaf page or the article page. So let me show you what that looks like. So I don't have table of contents here. Here's a limitation of this code that I have. So if I click here, now you can see that it's squishing this table of contents inside of the container for like all the text. So think of this as like a, a, a div block, for example. So it's like this invisible box that you can't see. You could do like inspect element and actually see it. The actual element name for this for anyone that's curious is this max w pros. This is the name of uh, this element specifically. So what it's doing is it's squishing that table of contents in here. So it's throwing this stuff off to the left. And then you can see, so this table of contents goes off of the headers here. So if I click here, now this isn't properly set up. So if I had proper spacing and different names. So this is an H2, this is an H3, this is an H4. The way you differentiate that. So let me go to the Gary V page here. It's just a matter of like these pound signs or hashtags, whatever you want to call them. So this is two is for H2, three is for H3, so on and so forth. So if you did like an H2 and then let's say three H3s and then another H2, so we'll do an H2 and then the three H3s will be nested there. Then if you do another H2, then it will start it down here as you go down the page. So that's how you do like these different, uh, add like these different table of contents. Now, if you wanna change things up a little bit, so it looks a little goofy to have these centered here. Like all of this, like now we've got elements that are looking a little screwed up here and, and off kilter a little bit. So if we go back here to this custom CSS that I have here, let's just go ahead and get rid of everything except for H1 and save that. Now it moves all of these over here. So for the time being, if you wanna use this, I'll come and update this at some point in the future after this video and this page, all, all this stuff's been published. At some point I'll have the custom code published onto the website and I'll have like proper table of contents and everything for these articles that I'm writing and stuff. I just, I've been busy with a ton of other stuff so I haven't got to it yet. But if you wanna leave all of this stuff over here, this actually looks fine. Like if you were to leave it this way with just the code that I have written for the time being, this looks fine to leave it this way. Now this is not centered with the body of text here, but it is centered with the entire element. So if you look at this, like it, it's not the worst looking thing ever. What I would prefer is to have this centered up like with the text. 
So here's what I'm thinking that I'll do at some point in the future, if or when I get time to get this done, is to write some, I'll need some JavaScript, some CSS, and some HTML, write something that has, so instead what it would be is a sticky table of contents that it will detect like when there's needs to be a table of contents for the page. And then there will be a sticky table of contents off to the side, kind of like how I have that set up on my cybersecurity website. So like where it just stays off to the side. So it's not trying to squish it inside of that div block. And then it throws all of this stuff off of center, like where it pushes it to the left. That's just a limitation with the code that I wrote. If you are willing to work with this, this is the like really the only downside that I've been able to find for this code right now. And by the way, you can come in here and change this around to whatever it is that you want to do. Like I said, I like Justify. I like having my stuff centered. But you can come in here and change this around. You can also change the size of this. I have it set to 825 pixels. I think that's a pretty good width. Like if you go back to book recommendations, this is, I believe I had set this to 1100. But like I said, this is 825 pixels here. I thought this looked pretty good, but again, you can come in here, feel free to play around with this, change it to whatever you want to. I'll have stuff updated here in the future, but that's pretty much all you need to do in order to be able to come in and actually like set the stuff up. Like I said, it looks really complicated when you're first doing this. It's actually very simple and straightforward. And I can tell you from building enough Squarespace, Wix, Webflow, all these different builder sites that this stuff is actually a lot smoother. When you get familiar with going through your config files and setting this stuff up, it actually is a lot easier, a lot less of a pain in the ass and headache to just come in here and build websites this way as opposed to doing it through like a website template builder. Plus these also just look really good and they also score really high on page insights. Now, uh, one other thing that I'll cover here real quick. So if you go here to the developer's documentation, there is different examples for website hosting. Now, if you go down here to hosting and deployment, there are specific instructions for each. Each one's going to be a little bit different depending on what it is that you want to have set up. So just plan accordingly. So like Cloudflare pages, for example, the instructions are going to depend on what platform you want to use and everyone's going to want to use something that's a little bit different. GitHub pages, like so I'm pretty sure that one's free. I know for sure Cloudflare pages is free up to like a certain point or a certain amount of traffic that you get. So whatever it is that you want, you'll just need to follow the install guide for your website host, like to actually host the uh, GitHub repo. And then once you do that, your website is pretty much live. Then you'll just have to go through your domain setup, which again, that is also dependent. There's so many different domain providers and then the different platforms that you can host on are going to have their own specific setup instructions. Those are so specific to each one that I can't like show all of the different ones, like be have it be feasible for this video. But that is pretty well, if like, if you just follow the stuff in this video, that will pretty much get you set up. And then from that point, you would just basically need to come in and fine tune things as to how you want them to look on your website. Just, just come in here to the different config files, change things around however you want them to look, and you are up and running, basically. Anyway, that's going to wrap the video up. If you have any questions, make sure to go ahead and drop them in the comments down below. Let me know, because I know this stuff can be kind of confusing for people that are first time to this stuff trying to set this stuff up. I know there's a lot to this, but like I said, when you come in and start actually like playing around with this stuff, it goes pretty smoothly. Like it's really a pretty good process to come in and work with all this stuff. So with all that being said, I appreciate the support as always, and I will see you in the next video.